Yeah. I'm Lynn. I'm going to talk about building a home on the internet, like becoming someone who just who lives their entire life through distributed technologies and like Facebook and Guild Wars and like all of my friends are like on my Steam friends list, all of them because it's just how I live my life, right? And how I go about doing that and how maybe you can do it better too. Um, to venture out into the brave new world of social networks, find the unexplored land of Tumblr hashtags and <laughs> cool friends on Reddit forums you've never knew even existed. Um, so yeah, like if you want to be someone who engages more on the internet and wants to like broaden your horizons and stuff, most people know about social networks. They know about like Facebook, Twitter, maybe Tumblr, but from there, there's a lot more you can really do with it, right? Like I know a lot of people who exist primarily on meta forums, like websites that hold a bunch of different separate forums like Reddit and I guess 4chan. Um, they're, I think those are the easiest ones to get engaged with. If you really, really care about a specific topic, like if you really care about some specific subset of, like if you really care about material science, I'm pretty sure you can like have your entire social circle be based off of the 10 people that frequent the material science thing on Reddit and y'all talk about the cool stuff you've done and no one else in the entire universe knows what you're talking about, right? But you're in there talking with certain engineers because that's the only place on the internet that you can find your place, right? Or um, another strange thing for me is that I know people who can subsist entirely off of chat rooms. Like I know people who, they just have an IRC account, and that's their only social networking, right? And I'm like, how, how do you? But they have like 30 IRC accounts, and they're constantly like hanging out with everyone, and they're having all these good conversations, primarily through IRC, and that's how they like exist. That's almost the entirety of their social life through like IRC networks, which probably weren't created for the sake of having someone base their social network off of them, right? And I think that's really cool that, at least from my point of view, there's, there's this wealth of websites that you can use to create a social infrastructure off of and like to find people who share interests with you. Right, so now I'm gonna talk about interests. <laughs> and the, the very obvious joke here is that if I'm on the internet, no one can know that I'm actually a cat. <laughs> Except for the people on my cat forum where all we talk about is being cats all the time. Um, so that's one good thing about the internet is like people talk about how on the internet like you can find anyone who holds your specific fetish or whatever like okay yeah but it can spread so many things like, like I talked about the material science subreddit or like like trans stuff or queer stuff or your specific issues as someone who came from a conservative state and is now moving into a blue state I'm pretty sure you could find that right and you can find people who share that specific subset of your identity and who like really want to engage with that part of your identity. I specifically get a lot out of like the trans um, Facebook and Tumblr groups. Cause like when I was first coming out, my Facebook people were like my friends that I knew from like Meetspace and college and my family and stuff, right? And then I like jumped into this trans group and all of a sudden like trans stuff became the majority of my life because there was just this lot of work. And trans people that I'd known for 30 seconds became they knew more about my, the basics of my identity than people I'd known for like 20 years, right? And I think the internet enables you to have, like to switch to, between these contexts and have these different identities. Like you can have like five, six different identities if you wanted, right? Like I know, I know for sure that there are at least this like gender queer people who like, they wanna be male in this context and female in this context. And there's nothing that the, like the internet completely enables that, right? To have, how you have all of these different diverse and amazing identities in these different contexts. Um, another thing that happens on the internet if you're like building your networks and your social stuff is that politics plays out on the internet in basically different ways than it does in real life. Right, like if you've been on Twitter or Tumblr for any period of time or Facebook for any period of time, you've probably heard the phrase net insert network here drama like I'm very well acquainted with Twitter drama. Like I'm, I'm building a social network, so I, like, I look at Twitter drama and I'm like, how could I address this specific issue from a technical point of view and like from a sociological point of view because the way that we interact with pump, like politics, drama, and riffs 
on social networks and online is very basically different from the way we do it in real life. My first example is like, if, if you're on Twitter and you're complaining to your best friend about something and you're not DMing them, like everyone who's mutuals with you can see it. There's no, there, there's kind of this illusion of space and privacy in a lot of these networks that you really don't have. People often see a lot of things, a lot of dramatic things that they really shouldn't. People know more things about their, the negative politics of the people around them on social networks than they would in real life. Like I can't scan the room and find an MRA right now, right? But like if I were to Twitter search for you all, I'm pretty sure I could do it in like five seconds. <laughs> right? And it, I just think that the way social networks are created and the way we interact with the internet has created this like false, this false like dramatic tension inside all of our social networks that we have to work actively against. Like try, try to be more empathetic of the way that, the way that we structure our social networks online is like creating more dramatic situations than we would like. And another thing about that is someone mentioned Gamergate earlier, which is good, so I don't have to do much of a lead up into that, but like Gamergate in large part exists on 4chan, but also in large part exists on Twitter now. And it's almost like, that's almost like having a neo-Nazi working in your building. They're just right there. They just have to like turn around the corner and then up there in your mentions and like this like neo-Nazi imagery all over your mentions because they're just right there, right? This doesn't happen in real life. Like when you have people with that huge rift of politics, there's usually a geographical difference between those two sets of people, right? Like I'm most likely not gonna find neo-Nazis unless I go to Germany, right? But like if I'm on Twitter, they're right there, right? And in, in the specific case of communities that have ex like clearly diametrically opposed views, like feminists versus anti-feminists, the, the way that you find people in those tags and the way that people search for those tags, it's more like having a brother or sister or a roommate who has that view all the time. Like you're, if you have someone who has a diametrically opposed view on the internet and you talk about it a lot, you're gonna run into them as opposed to like, in real life, if you go, if you did democratic activism and stuff, you aren't as likely to run into Republicans by virtue of doing democratic activism. You're likely to run into Democrats because that's who you're targeting, right? On the internet, that sort of gets inverted because of the way that we search for things, right? So that's something you have to be aware of. Like, the internet dramatically increases all of these different political effects. Another problem with building your networks online is the way that time influences like the social interactions we have with each other relative to how they influence each other in real life. Like, so for example, if it's like 3 a.m. and I'm sad posting, I do all my sad posting at 3 a.m. I very much recommend it. Um, <laughs> but like, I like if I was if I was like just being depressed or like crying at 3 a.m. in my house, which is the equivalent of my 3 a.m. sad post on Twitter.com. Um, it's like only people in my house hear it, but like if it's 3 a.m. for me, it's 6 a.m. in New York, and you might be waking up for when you, like, might be just waking up, and you have like my sad post on your dashboard when you're trying to get ready for work. And this, or like I said it three hours ago, and it's still the only thing on your timeline because no one says anything at 5 a.m., right? And, and like it, it just creates this inappropriate situation where like I'm not gonna talk about I'm not gonna I'm not gonna like come to work or I'm like I'm not gonna be talking dramatically about like how my cat just died on a commute at 6 a.m. on a train like I try to be more appropriate than that but like if I'm on Twitter it's 3 a.m. for me it's perfect time to talk about how my cat died but like you're trying to go to work right and so when you're on social networks and stuff you have to be really extra aware of like people's subjective experiences of time, how far it is between you seeing something and like them posting it. And because like it, it really dramatically changes the appropriateness of your potential response. Um, another specific quirky thing with periods of time is a lot of people feel like, I'm just, this is specific advice. A lot of people really don't like it if you favor a selfie from six months ago. <laughs> just, unlike, unless you're like your best friend or you're like, flirting with them or something, like, just don't do it, right? And I'll tell you specifically, trans people really don't like it if you do that. Just don't do it. 
Um, but th this is like a general thing, right? Like, if I'm walking down the street and if I see someone on the street, I'm not gonna see them as they were a year ago. Like, that's not how time works. <laughs> but like, if I'm on Twitter, them, them right now is like is almost as accessible as them from a year ago, right? Like it's just like a few swipes over, but that's that's not how they experience it subjectively, right? And so you, as someone who would potentially want to interact with the internet, you have to be aware of like that extreme difference between at least, like at least the specific aspect of physical presentation, how someone's opinion on how you would comment on that changes dramatically based on time. Um, and the last thing that's really specific that I want to say about time-based effects on social networks is that, like, a lot of people, like, a lot of people will, will like, like, I delete my tweets after three months right now because I don't feel like dealing with me from three months ago, <laughs> right? <laughs> like, if you come up to me and you're like, Glenn, you said something really racist six months ago, I'd be like, I don't care. Me three months ago was, like, really drunk. The whole, like, <laughs> I don't care, right? Um, but I don't know if it's like internet subculture or just because it's how we work when we have access to so much information. But I feel like we're, I'm, I'm in a space right now, especially, especially in social justice space, where I see a lot of people talking about something that someone said three years ago that's like mildly oppressive, but I don't really care because it was three years ago, right? Or like, or something that just decays by virtue of the fact that it, it's something that doesn't matter more as, as time passes. Right, you have to. You have to. You have to be aware that like people can change. A lot of these oppressive forces don't exactly like have the same force as they would over time. I think mis misogyny is probably an exception to that. Like I, since misogyny is one of the more ridiculous cultural forces, since mis like women are half of the population, yet people people still manage to be, mis be misogynist. I think that's one of the forces that people tend to stay misogynist as opposed to the other forces where like someone's transphobic, but then they see the tr a trans person for the first time ever, right? Um, so like if someone was transphobic like six years ago, I don't care, right? But you as a sub as your subjective experience on the internet, it might be your first time hearing it, and it's not like you're hearing it as them saying like, yeah, when I was a little kid and I was like early 20s, I was really bad in X, Y, and Z ways. You just see it quoted or you see it outside of the context of its age, right? And so you have to really, really be, especially with people in their early 20s like me, be aware of like how like stacking gears onto a, a message or like someone's presentation can dramatically change it. And again, like this is something you only see online. Like I'm not gonna, I don't see anyone going to a conference and giving a talk, conference talk of like five years ago, I was this, 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 and this. That's usually not relevant. But on the internet, it suddenly becomes relevant because that's how the internet works. And my last major point is, I think all of my other points were, except for the first one, were about like, here are things you shouldn't do. Here are common pitfalls that happen when you're trying to build yourself on the internet. Um, on the opposite side, I want to talk about how you make yourself vulnerable, how you bring people in more on a place where, like, especially like Twitter, where everything is intrinsically public. It just feels like you have inherent distance from everyone that you don't have in real life. Um, so this specifically is just a picture from Wildstar of me sitting on a little mat, being really zen. It's a game about like shooting like bunches of rats with like really sharp discs. But I'm like, I'm chill. I'm like sitting on my little mat. I'm like looking like I'm meditating or something. I'm not about to like go slaughter like 100 million rats, right? And <laughs> like I could be having a conversation with my friend who's sitting over there and we're just talking about something chill that happened in our lives. And like after this, we're probably gonna do something in incredibly violent. But like if you, you can impress some calmness upon situations or environments or networks that aren't that don't inherently have it. Like a, a good example of this is just Twitter private accounts, right? Like I don't I don't like try it sometime, right? Like even if you have a thousand followers, say something inherently personal on a public account. Switch your account to private and just think about how much more personal that statement becomes, right? Um, you can do this with like gaming groups or whatever. You create a private gaming group, 
invite three or four of your friends, and all of a sudden it's a much more personal experience than these random people that you just met on like pickup games, and then it would be gone in five seconds, right? Like you, ha it, I think that a lot of internet tools aren't inherently created to create private, small, emotional, vulnerable spaces. But when you do, you can create like the exact same type of relationships that you would have otherwise. Like me and my fiance, we, we decided that we were gonna get engaged almost before we even first met, right? And it was primarily through stuff like, we talked to each other on private accounts a lot and we would like hang out in Guild Wars, we'd talk about our day while we were like slaughtering so many centaurs and it was cute. <laughs> And it was good. And these are like the sort of things you can create on the internet. And these are kind of my rules on how you create them. Thanks.